Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this week at the Community Media Zoom Makers, sorry, the Community Media Makers Zoom drop-in that we hold each week, we're having an open session. We're having a discussion about uh, the potential of deregulation for community radio here in the UK and what that might mean. So DCMS, Department for Culture, Media and Sport, who are responsible for media, broadcasting and uh, uh, cultural content here in the UK, are in engaging in a consultation process at the moment, putting together the uh, principles on which the broadcasting legislation that they're going to bring forward in 2023, the white paper, uh, will be founded on and there's some uh, discussion and some argument uh, about the the nature of deregulation and what that means and for community radio there's a uh, an expectation that what we want to retain within any kind of uh, framework for future broadcasting is a couple of things. So access is one of the founding principles of community media and community radio is that you can have uh, direct access to the, the mode of production, if you like, the platforms that you can set up your own radio station and that you have it self-governed and self-owned by the community itself and that it's not part of a corporate network. And we think that's really important for democracy to have a, a very pluralistic view, both commercial, public service and community ownership of our media assets, our media institutions and organisations. Uh, I think one of the most important things about access is that, you know, who, who is involved in creating and producing content uh, that we broadcast and that we share and often uh, just through sheer expediency, uh, people have to form small tight-knit organizations that have a clear rationale but they tend to serve an audience or they tend to serve a market and what they're not and what they don't necessarily include is a sense of being owned by and created by and uh, governed by and have an accountability to communities themselves and those communities might be communities of place, they might be communities of interest or communities of identity. Uh, we are open and pragmatic about the nature of different types of community media and the kind of platforms that it, it exists on, but we feel, uh, or many people feel, that there's a, uh, a need to protect the essential role of broadcasting because it offers a unique uh, way of engaging with people that you don't have to be online that you can listen in different ways it's not all about downloading podcasts for example but it's part of a, a, a series of curated programs that are you know kind of flow with your day so you know we recognize that a lot of people really like radio and like being part of radio and want to get involved in radio and have lots of things to talk about and discuss and share their experiences um, and I suppose one of my uh, uh, fears or, or you know, one of the things I like about community media is that you don't have to get approval from a distant committee. You know, so if you if you want to produce content in, say, a BBC local radio station, for example, it pretty much has to go through a an editorial process which goes up and down a hierarchy and a, a chain of command. Similar with a kind of commercial chain that has many, you know, one you're tightly brand, uh, bound by brand rules and certain format types. Whereas with community radio, you've got this really open space to experiment. A lot of the time. It isn't commercially viable and nor should it expect to be and we don't do it we don't produce content on the basis of its commercial viability we do it because it says something about who we are and who our community is that is outside of that um, it might generate a small amount of income but it's never going to be self-sustaining so you have to look to other places and in other ways to model uh, you know you, an income to make it sustainable it might be you know volunteer support lots of people giving up their time it might be small gifts there's a whole range of different ways and we don't want to see that 
or I don't want to see and uh, I'm wondering what the conversation will be like uh, on Thursday uh, is that you know if we if we dilute that expectation that community radio has to be can't be viewed in the same way as commercial or public service broadcasting that it has to have a uh, some protection from the market because otherwise uh, it won't be able to serve its purpose it'll get easily swamped uh, and it'll get easily pushed out further and further to the margins and similarly the essential nature of um, being able to directly participate in the development and organisation of the platform that you're part of is essential. So having separate uh, management processes which are run by a small number of people uh, with no accountability and no involvement of people from within the community that you, you're trying to serve is problematic as well. Um, there's also uh, a question to be asked about the scope of um, existing commercial uh, routes to independent broadcasting which maybe aren't being fully explored by uh, people in the marketplace and how could that be more easily transitioned and then to just put it into some context what we want to think about is you know we, we a lot of the legislation for broadcasting was uh, put in place because broadcasting is regarded as a, a scarce resource <coughs> and yeah, that might have been true in the, the you know in the 1920s or the 1970s when a lot of the legislation was identified. But we kind of live in a post-scarcity world now. We've we've got the you know, the, the internet and you know, a lot of uh, content that's produced on the web. Whilst uh, it can be very good and very interesting, is sometimes not ideal for serving a place or serving a, a, a dispersed group of people. And so we've got to look at things like having access to FM and AM uh, as being something which is necessary in the future and ongoing. So the kind of platform, the suggestion that we might have a digital switch off, for example, um, I'm fine and would you know, kind of be happy if the route to digital broadcasting that the major corporations wish to, wish to pursue is uh, um, made accessible and can be deregulated, I'm fine with that. If the space that's opened up by that shift over from FM and AM onto DAB is retained for local um, commercial and community broadcasters, so single ownership bodies if you like, so you're not building up networks of stations that are sharing content but are dedicated to producing local content either on a commercial or a, com you know, a community basis and the kind of projects that I'm involved with and trying to develop at the moment just wouldn't survive on a, a monetize a, a commercial monetization model of content it has to be looked at and thought about in a different way so I want to kind of find out what the uh, what other people's views are about this. We're going to have a, a Zoom meeting conversation. We'll use post-it notes and electronic post-it notes and uh, breakout rooms just to get some kind of uh, feedback in terms of what is the positive story that we can tell about community radio and community media that allows us to uh, you know that we want to see protected that we are proud of that we've worked hard to engender and create and foster uh, but we would if deregulation is done in a one-sided way would not necessarily uh, be beneficial to those of us who don't want to follow a, a more corporate model of uh, public engagement through community media uh, so yeah, if you want to sign up for this, the best, probably the best way to go to is decentered.co.uk and you'll find a blog post about this which has got the Eventbrite link in. I've shared it on Twitter and Instagram as well, so if you search uh, Decentered Media on Twitter and Instagram you'll find the link there and I'm listed on Eventbrite as well. Uh, so if you go to Eventbrite and search for Decentered Media you can get the link. Uh, via that as well so sign up um, and we'll have a conversation and it'll be interesting to hear the different views and uh, you know just really nice I think we you know taking stock as to the creative potential of community radio and the passion and the positive approach that we could we have fostered in different forms of community media and what we might think of as serving the needs of our communities 
Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting conversation. So I'll see you on Thursday. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at decentered media.